Digium's new line of IP phones are built specifically to work with Asterisk and Asterisk-based phone systems. They are the first phones designed to take full advantage of the power and flexibility of the world's most widely deployed open source communications platform. One of the most impressive features of Digium phones is how easy they are to install. In this two-part video tutorial, I'll show you how to provision a Digium phone using the DPMA, or Digium Phone Module for Asterisk. In part one of the video, I'll give a little background on what DPMA is and describe conceptually how it works. Then I'll walk through some of the general asterisk configuration needed to set up any SIP phone, including Digium phones. In part two of the video, I'll walk through setting up the DPMA configuration file known as resdigiumphone.conf. Then I'll show how a Digium phone responds to the configuration. The DPMA is very simple to use, however, this will be an intermediate level tutorial. I will be explaining the concept step by step, but it will be helpful to be familiar with Asterisk and Linux as a prerequisite. If you are new to Asterisk, I recommend learning the basics first. The O'Reilly book, Asterisk the Definitive Guide, as well as the Asterisk Essentials online video course are good resources. Links can be found in the description section of this video. The DigiM phone module for Asterisk is a binary Asterisk module that acts as a secure gateway between the server and DigiM phones. Asterisk uses the DPMA to provision and manage the phones, while the phones use it to retrieve data from Asterisk to be used with the integrated phone applications. This enables rich and intuitive integration between Digium phones and Asterisk. In this tutorial, I will specifically focus on the ability of the DPMA to provision Digium phones. During the tutorial, I will be using the DPMA together with the certified branch of Asterisk 1.8. You can download this branch from asterisk.org slash downloads. You can download the DPMA from downloads.digium.com. The DPMA is available free of cost, however, it must be registered and its end user license agreement must be accepted before Asterisk can use it. You can obtain a registration code free of cost from store.digium.com. All of these links can be found in the description section of this video. In order to understand how the DPMA makes provisioning easy, it will be helpful to take a step back and look at the typical phone provisioning process. In order for a SIP phone to work with Asterisk, you need to configure both sides of the connection, both the phone and Asterisk. To start, account details for the phone must be configured on the Asterisk server. These account details typically include a username and password and may include other options such as the network address and voice mailbox. Then the phone must be configured with similar settings. The process of placing this configuration on the phone is called provisioning. There are two predominant configuration methods that work with most SIP phones. The first is to configure each phone manually. This is done from the phone's physical interface or using a web-based graphical user interface served from the phone. The second method is to use DHCP option 66. When the phone requests an IP address from the DHCP server, the server is configured to send instructions to the phone on how to download a pre-built configuration. The server typically stores the phone's configuration in XML files and serves them to the phone using a protocol such as FTP. Both of these methods work just fine with Digium phones. However, by using the Digium phone module for Asterisk, we have a faster and simpler solution. I'll quickly describe two of the reasons the DPMA is so easy to use, namely MDNS and text-based configuration. Digium phones and the DPMA make use of a protocol called MDNS to locate each other on the network. MDNS, or Multicast DNS, is a method for automatic name resolution. Apple's Bonjour and Linux's Avahi are both implementations of MDNS. Essentially, when an asterisk server with the DPMA and Digium phones are placed on the same network, they are able to locate each other and begin communicating automatically via MDNS. This minimizes the amount of configuration an administrator needs to do. For more information on installing and configuring Avahi for Linux, see the DPMA user's guide linked in the description section of this video. DPMA configuration options are set in resdigiumphone.conf. This is a simple text-based .conf file that lives in Etsy Asterisk and is configured using the same syntax that most other asterisk.conf files use. If you are familiar with setting options in sip.conf or voicemail.conf, then using resdigiumphone.conf will be a snap. Setting up a Digium phone with the DPMA involves a simple three-step process. Step one is to create a SIP account in SIP.conf. In tandem with the SIP account, 
I will also set up some other general asterisk configuration, including a mailbox and voicemail.conf, an extension to dial the SIP account in extensions.conf, and call parking using the samplefeatures.conf. Step two is to then link the SIP account to a phone profile in resdigiumphone.conf. The phone profile contains the phone specific settings that are not exposed in SIP.conf. Step three is to associate the profile to an actual phone. Once the profile has been associated, the phone is able to fetch its configuration from the server automatically. Associating a phone profile with a Digium phone can be done in several ways. I will illustrate two of them in this tutorial. Select the profile from the phone and link the profile to the phone's MAC address. In the first method, I'll show how a profile can be selected directly from the phone's interface. When a Digium phone contacts the configuration server, it will retrieve a list of available user profiles. For this tutorial, I will disable authentication. This means that any profile in the list can be easily selected from any phone. These settings work well in environments where you'd like users to be able to configure their own phones. The DPMA and Digium phones make this simple enough that anyone can do it. The second method will use MAC address authentication. With this method, the Astra server will know which profile belongs with which phone based on the phone's MAC address. When the phone starts up, or is set to reconfigure, it will automatically fetch its configuration from the server without any user interaction at all. Here I am connected to my Astra server. Step 1 is to set up the SIP account and general Astra settings. I will navigate to Etsy Asterisk and then open the SIP.com file using a text editor. You can see I have configured several parameters in the general section. Refer to the DPMA user's guide for a description of the general SIP settings to use. Below the general section, I have configured a SIP account. I have named this SIP account based on the primary account user. In this case, the account is for Alan Dorner, so I have named the SIP account A Dorner. Then I have set the type to friend because friend accounts are matched in asterisk for incoming calls based on username. Peer accounts, on the other hand, are matched based on IP address. Type equals friend is helpful in case I want to assign multiple SIP accounts to a single phone. Digium phones can support one SIP account for each line key on the phone. Next I have set host equals dynamic. This is because I will expect the phone to register to asterisk. I have set the context to internal underscore phones and set a secure SIP secret. It is best practice to use unique secure passwords for every SIP account. This helps to guard against toll fraud. Finally, I have set the mailbox to 600. This matches the mailbox I have set up in voicemail.conf and the extension name in extensions.conf. This is a very basic SIP account. On a production system, you will most likely want to include additional settings. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, these settings will suffice. Now I will create several other SIP accounts similar to the first. I will then save SIP.conf and open voicemail.conf. You can see I have set up a voice mailbox for each one of my users. Here's the mailbox for Alan Dorner. I have set the mailbox number to 600, configured a default voicemail pin, and entered his name. A voice mailbox must be configured in voicemail.conf in order to take advantage of the integrated voicemail application on a Digium phone. Next, I will show my configuration in extensions.conf. Here, I have created the internal underscore phones context and defined an extension to dial each SIP account inside. Here is extension 600. Priority 1 will dial the SIP account A Dorner for 20 seconds. At priority 2, the call is sent to the voicemail application. I'm using the IF function to play the correct greeting to the caller based on the dial status variable. If the dial status is busy, the busy message is played. Otherwise, the unavailable message will be played. The third priority simply hangs up the call. Finally, I will include the part calls context inside the internal underscore phones context. I will save extensions.conf and open features.conf. Here you can see I am using the sample features.conf file which sets the call parking extension to 700. The part calls context must be included in the internal underscore phones context in order for my phones to access the call parking extensions. This configuration is needed in order to take advantage of the integrated call parking application on a Digium phone. For more information on configuring SIP.conf, 
voicemail.conf, extensions.conf, or features.conf, see the comments in the sample configuration files, along with the resources linked in the description section of this video. In part two of this tutorial, we will finish the configuration.